Hi guys, welcome to this module on Microsoft Excel. In this session, I want to show you how to create two different types of timesheet. On the left hand side of the screen, you can see a basic timesheet. On the right, a timesheet for a 24 hour cycle. So let's just have a look at this. If I change this, um, let's change the finish time to 18 hundred hours and the overtime to 20 hundred hours you can see he's now getting two hours overtime and this is adding it up 10 hours he worked if I put that back down to 1700 in fact I'll put that to zero and I'll put this to 1700 so it didn't get any overtime so it just did a seven hours and 30 minute shift. Now down the bottom there, you have got some sums, the auto sum adding up the hours and it is adding up the hours as time. So I've custom formatted that, which I'll show you how to do in a minute. Then we've got the rates of pay, standard rate and overtime rate. So that is just doing a formula there. So it's basically this cell times that cell, so G8 times C11, 12 for the overtime. And then you have to times it by 24 to get that to give you the right answer. And then the same goes there to work out the standard rate based on those hours, 38 hours. And then that's the actual time. Now to create this, first of all, what I need to do is just put all this back to format general so you start off with a basic sheet and I'll just put this onto accounting and these can go on these can go on accounting as well right so on this example you just actually type in the date so I'm going to use today's date which is control semicolon and I'm going to start at nine o'clock and my lunch is going to be at 12 30 and then I start in the afternoon at 1300 and I finish the day's work at 1700 and I haven't got any overtime at the moment so well, let's do the overtime I better do the overtime let's do the overtime let's say I finished at 1800 overtime so I did one hour overtime so I need a formula in here to work that out so that's a simple equals this one minus that put the tick now I get one hour and then the hours to add all this up to incorporate the overtime or not is I need to do an if statement in there so if I click on this cell so you can see the if statement I'll just copy this if statement down so I just highlight this little bit and copy it and then just tick that and just paste it there so you can see it Okay, we need to do a little formula to work out the overtime hours, first of all. So it's just a simple basic if it's going to look at the overtime finish time. If that's zero, it's not going to do anything. Otherwise, it's going to take F3 from E3. In this case, it'll be 18. So let's just do that. So equals if, open bracket, if this cell equals zero comma show zero do nothing otherwise you need to click on that cell and minus this cell and then that should be one it's not formatted to time so i need to go into format cells to format it as time the key command to get into format cells is control and the number one and when once you're in format cells you go custom and you come down to the time for formats and the one you need is this one with the square H or the H inside a square bracket click OK to that and then that just say one hour now if I pull that down to there that's OK and then this formula needs to also have a if statement so equals if open bracket so if this cell 
equals zero comma we only want to add up the normal working hours so it's going to be the lunch time minus the start time which should give you three plus or three and a half plus the finish time minus the start time which will give you four so that should be seven and a half comma now if i want the overtime included as well i still have to do this first bit so it's going to be lunch minus the start plus finish minus the start plus overtime finish minus the finish close the if bracket click the tick now i need to format that to, to that to time as well so control one custom i could have used the format painter really but here we go click on the format you want eight hours 30 is correct one hours overtime seven hours 30 would be the normal time so if i put a a zero in there that works so i'll do undo so now i can pull all of this down to the bottom and if i pull put this back to zero and then pull that down and then this needs to be formatted to money i will use the format painter so format painter not to money to time so i'll do that for both of those now i've got hashes there the reason i've got hashes is because i've put a time into the next day so i need to if i want to do that properly i need to do a time within the same day and then that will work so i'll just put zero on these ones this is the problem when you've got shift patterns which is why over here i've got you an example of how to do that now so we've just got two hours there i should just better pull this formula down so it's giving you the hours so i need to add up the overtime hours so that's just an, the auto sum tick it's just coming up with two and then if I pull that across, it's coming up with 39 and a half hours, which is correct. So there's two hours over time and normally it's 37 and a half hour a week. So that's correct. So if I put that to zero, 37 and a half hours. So that's correct. Now the formulas for the pay, you can see there it's G23. So G23 which is this figure, two hours, times C26. C26 is the overtime rate. And then to make it into pounds, you have to do the times 24. And likewise with this one, so this is looking at the normal rate, which is this one standard rate. So it's H23, which is a total for the week in hours, times B26, and then times 24 again to give it into pounds. And then this is giving you the total pay for that. So that's the standard example where you're just putting the start times and finish times and this is working out the overtime. Now where most of these timesheets go wrong is when people are trying to do a 24 hour example. As you saw there, when I pulled the one down, that went into one o'clock in the morning, which then caused this to go endless. And you had loads of hashes, which you can never get rid of. You can't widen the column to get rid of the hashes the formula doesn't work so what you have to do is actually put the time and date or the date and time in so that excel knows it's the next day and then the thing will work the formulas are exactly the same but it will work now you can do this different ways with more complicated formulas but remember the bigger the formulas the more memory it uses so you want to keep things as straightforward as possible so what I'm going to do now is put a date and time in this cell. So today's date, the key command for today's date is control semicolon. 
then a space, and then the start time for this example. Let's say they start at 10 o'clock at night. They have a lunch at 2 o'clock, so I still need to put the date on. So this date is going to be the next day. So if I change that to the 22nd, and then do a space at the end, and 0, 0200. And then we're starting work again on the 22nd of August 2020 at 0, 0230 hours. And we are finish, finishing work on the 22nd of August 2020 at 0600. And let's say we do a bit of overtime, or we're due to finish there. Let's do a bit of overtime. So we'll do the 22nd of August 2020, and we did till 8 o'clock. Now you've entered the times and you can pull the basic times down. So if I wanted to, so if that's a normal start time, I can pull that one down and that, that would be the normal finish time. So I can just pull those down and then just check that the dates changed. No, they didn't. So I need to do it one at a time. So let's just pull that down. 22, 23. That's it, 26. So you finish in the morning on the 26th. Now, the formulas to work this out are exactly the same as the ones that we did on this one. So these formulas, you need to put a little if statement in there for the overtime column. And then you need to do another little if statement, which will add up the basic hours and then the overtime hours if there is any overtime hours. So I should be able to copy and paste these formulas from the top. So copy that one. Paste. Paste that one, and then I shall pull this formula. No, I'll just type a zero in there, actually, zero, zero. And then just pull that one down to make sure it just picks that up as zero. Yes, it does. So now I should be able to pull that one down. So it would normally be blank, but you need to put a, in fact, I want it to be it down with my control key down it should stay as a zero that's it so a control key and the little square pulls that down so now I now should be able to pull this down and that should say zero and then I can copy this one copy paste it in there so two hours over time is correct and then if I pull that one down the 730 for everything else that's okay so we're good now we need to add up the overtime hours so that's just a sum function to add up it should pick up the format it's time and then i should better pull that one across and it will give me the overall hours 39 minutes now the formula was already in this cell from before so basically this one is looking at the overtime rate so you get 12 pound an hour for overtime and there's two hours so that's 24 pound this is looking at the standard rate, and then you need to add these two together to get your total. So I can use a little sum function, or you can type it out. You just need to add those two, and then tick the formula or press enter. So the pay for this person is 419. Now, because you, you're probably gonna use this over and over again, if I just delete this formula off, I would save this as a template and I have saved this as a template because what I find quite often is people start using these sort of things and then eventually they start deleting the formula cells. So you don't want people pressing delete like that because that now doesn't work. And then people that haven't got the knowledge of how to reset this would be manually doing this and then that's how things go wrong. So to password protect um, the whole sheet would be no good because I wouldn't be able to type in the actual, the end times and things like that, or the start times. So the only bits I need to password protect are the, the where the formulas are. So in this example, let's just say 
I'll do it on this one. So we need people to be able to type in all of this area, all of that area. And if you're doing the 24 hour one, I'm holding, I'm holding my control key down while I select this one, same area. Now you probably have two separate sheets for these if you've got if you've got a shift pattern and you've got a standard sheet, but I, that's what I want to be able, where I want to be able to type. So format cells, and you take in the lock off these particular cells. They're already off because I've done it before, and then you're clicking on protect sheet. So when I click on protect sheet, it asks me for a password. I'm clicking OK. I don't. I'm not going to give it a password. But now I should be able to type still in that cell, which I can, and then it works it out for me. But I should not be able to type on the formula cell, which I can't. And then the last, last thing you should do is save this as a template. So file, save as, or save. I've already got it as a template, but you would just make sure you select Excel template. It will then go in, if it's on your own PC, it will go into custom office templates. If you're on a network, it will go into whatever your IT department has set up as a templates folder. And if they haven't, you can ask them to do that because that's how you should work. And then you click save, save. It's already there, so I'm not going to do that again. So that's the end of this little phase. That's how to create a timesheet, a standard one, and how to create a 24-hour timesheet. I hope you enjoyed that, and I'll see you in the next one.